Hi. Hi, everyone. So it's just me, Polly Austin, and I am here today with you live to talk to you about a crazy thing that I don't even know if you know about. And it's the biggest, most important part of your body, and it's what keeps you healthy. Skin, mind, sleep, hormones, every part of you, and it is your gut, okay? Now, as soon as you say that to people, I want to talk to you about your gut, they turn around and they're like, Polly, I don't want to talk to you about my poops. And I'm like, no, I'm not talking to you about your poops. Now, I talk about poops a lot because I work with nursery children. But on this occasion, I'm not talking to you about your poops. For years and years and years, your gut, nobody was bothered about it, nobody thought about it. It was basically, there's your esophagus, there's your tummy, your food's going to go in there, you're going to digest it. What you need is absorbed, but you don't go through your colon and Bob's your uncle, on you go with your life. It is not the case anymore. A huge amount of research has been done in the past 20 years it was triggered in small amounts and then it was really taken up and run with by Dr. E.M. Quigley. Now, Dr. E.M. Quigley is the chief of the division of gastroenterology and herpetology at Houston Medical Hospital in Texas. OK, so he knows his, his stuff. And me being the science geek that I, I am and the nutrition geek, I still read a lot of science and medical journals. And I came across an article he'd written and it blew my mind. I mean, I know in my business, I know in nutrition, the gut's huge, the gut's huge, and I think about it and talk about it. But when I actually read his article on what it affects, it blew my mind. I mean, it is controlling your gut, what is happening inside your gut, and your gut health controls your immune system, your moods, your mental health, your skin, your hormones, your sleep, your autoimmunity, everything. It's basically referred to now in the medical world as your second brain, okay? So it's not just about that digest your food. If your gut is not working at its optimal, your body is not working at its optimal. And it feels like none of us ever knew this. What do you know about your gut? Have you, what's it called? There's a drink, isn't there? Is it your cult? Something like that. It's advertised on television and it always says, it has all your good bacteria in it. And you're like, oh, it doesn't mean anything but you know what it means everything and until your gut is healthy and really working at its best levels the rest of your body can't it affects your brain your heart your immunity all of those things as i've just said now i'm here to tell you unfortunately the four biggest things that destroy your gut health are some of the four most super amazingly yummiest things i'm sorry but it's dairy and it's sugar and it's caffeine and it's alcohol now i'm not asking you to give them up forever but we do have to reduce them the worst and the biggest two actually are sugar and dairy if you can keep yourself to an 80 20 so you are super great with your gut health five days of the week and maybe, you know, have your iron on a Friday or a Saturday and keep that to a minimal. You're going to keep the destruction of your gut to a minimal. But sugar, especially the white sugar, it's got to go. Now, I do not say that easily because I tell you, I struggle with not having sugar. When Neil makes me any cereal... He, he physically dies inside at the amount of sugar that I put on my cereal. I mean, we're talking two, three tablespoonfuls. I know, I know, I know. Not anymore, obviously, but I like my sugar. And that has always been my problem. Now, what sugar does, it tends to be, obviously, in all of your processed, highly processed food. Highly, highly, and it's really high on any of your low-fat food. Please don't start doing a low-fat diet. It is not good for you. It's not. And too much sugar in your processed food damages and decreases the microbiome in your gut. It physically destroys your probiotics. Now, once you do that, it causes inflammation, it causes disease, it causes an imbalance, which makes you actually crave sugar, which is 
a crazy situation. What you're craving is fermentation and yeast and fermented foods, which help build your microbiome back up, but you interpret it as a craving for sugar. So you eat more sugar and it destroys your gut and it makes you want more sugar. So you eat more sugar and it destroys your gut and you end up on this hamster wheel of a nightmare that you don't even know that you're on. So sugar has to go. Now, one of the best things you can do if you really need it to replace it is to replace it with stevia, which is a plant-based sweetener. I personally don't like it um, in a powdered form. So I just don't have cereal anymore. It's just that simple. Um, or have the raw cane sugar in a very, very minimal amount. It doesn't peak your GI. So it's not causing that massive insulin cycle in your body and it's not as disruptive to your gut it's still not great in very very small quantities you can compromise with it dairy however is and i'm not saying this as a vegan i'm not going on to the ethics of it i'm just telling you it leaches the calcium from your body and it causes a massive amount of destruction inside your gut. It can cause that leakage of those big proteins into your body, which cause an autoimmune response and an immune response, and it causes your immunity to start attacking your own body. So dairy is first and foremost absolutely terrible. Now, I am breaking my own rules and having notes in front of me. The reason, I hate it when people have notes in front of them when they're talking to me about some things. I feel like well, you don't actually know what you're talking about. They're for me to glance at to keep me on target because otherwise I will be here for about three hours because I'm so mind blown about the effects of what I've learned in the past few weeks, well, the past few months that I literally will be here 24 hours later and, you know, and as I'll be ringing me up going, hi. Is there a reason that you're not in your Google Meets? And they'll be like, yes, because I'm still alive, talking about the gut. And none of us want that to happen. So, something else that I did not know, actually, until 10 days ago. Your gut produces the second largest amount of serotonin in your body. I know. I, the, I thought that the only place serotonin was produced was your brain. That is not true. It is produced in your gut. So, like for me, I am massively gluten intolerant. It causes pain in my fingers. It causes bloating. And I have, I suffer from massively disturbed sleep and problems getting to sleep and mood swings. I had never ever linked those four things together because I've never kept a journal and gone, mm, I've just had three crumpets and these are my effects within 24 hours. But when I learned about this information, I realized this is all linked to the food that I'm eating and the state that my gut is in. It blew my mind. So your serotonin is the key hormone in stabilizing your mood, your feelings of well-being, your happiness. So when your gut is disturbed, it decreases the amount of serotonin that is produced in your body. That decreases your mood, it decreases your mental health. It causes massive amount of sleep disturbance and insomnia and chronic fatigue. All from eating too much bread or sugar or dairy or coffee. That is absolutely crazy, isn't it? So, inflammation in the gut. Now, we're going a little bit back to dairy here, but dairy is the biggest culprit. Inflammation in the gut can lead to two things, eczema and massive, massive acne outbreaks. Now, the, the acne comes from the fact that your gut, when it is in distress, releases, um, oh God, the word's gone completely out of my head. It's gone completely out of my head. I'll come back to it. Sebum, sebum. Oh my goodness, I wanted to say semen and I knew that was wrong. Um, sebum. And sebum causes the bacteria to massively, massively multiply in your face, which makes your face greasy and it traps the grease into your skin so it can't actually escape and causes massive um, ex uh, acne outbreaks. Your eczema just comes from an it's an immunity response caused again by the distress in your gut from dairy and from the fact that dairy actually um causes lesions and it causes devastations to the lining of your gut which allows large protein molecules to seep through your gut and into your body and your body then attacks it thinking that it's a toxin it's a bacteria it's a virus and it attacks it 
um, and it, it just causes a massive amount of distress to your immune system and your autoimmune system. Now, your autoimmune system, this is when your body can't really tell the difference between what is an invading force, a bacteria, a virus, a toxin, and what is your body. So it's it's crazy. It's, you know, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, lupus, psoriasis, um, really all of those big diseases when your body for a crazy reason looks at itself and just starts eating it just starts attacking it um and it's obviously is a really really bad situation to be in because you cannot there is no way to reprogram your immune system if that's what it's going to do that's what it's going to do however knowing that the trigger of your immune system and the trigger of your um autoimmune system comes from your gut health is a massive health help in controlling the situation reduce what is causing inflammation reduce what is causing stress reduce what is causing distress and you will reduce the impact you still have to live with what has happened so far i still got to live with you know that my hepatitis nodules and the agony that they are every day i still got to live with the fact that my right knee needs replacing and in about three years my left hip will quite excited about that actually i'll be really robotic then be like robocop but without the cop i don't know maybe i'll just join the police just look and be robocop don't think they'll have me with four joints massively see this is why i've got my notes to keep me on target robocop how on earth has that even come into our conversation food intolerances are also a huge part of problems in your gut and many many of our complicated foods complicated carbohydrates we struggle to digest them when our gut is in distress it simply can't break them down it simply can't break them down especially with carbohydrates where sugars are involved your sugar's gone into your body it's killed your probiotics it's just killed them your complex carbs come into your body and your body can't digest them it simply can't digest them so you know what it does it just stores them it just stores them causing weight problems causing physical problems and not just increased weight but also decreased weight because here's one myth i want to smash with you weight does not equal health it doesn't i made that mistake for years and years and years the thinner i am the better i am no it all starts with your health maintain your weight around that if that's what you need to do for you but in a healthy way mentally and physically and that can only come from getting control of your gut, what is in your gut and how your gut is working. So what can you do for your gut? How can you help? Here are your big things. Stress, hydration, sleep, food, the way you eat your food and what is in your food. Now, first and foremost, you go, you need to reduce your stress. Now, right now, none of us are reducing our stress and I completely appreciate that. I have just got this continual white noise buzz of stress. Just, it just doesn't go away. It just doesn't go away, stress right now. All we can do is manage it. Um, the way that I'm doing that is through meditation. We do a lot of meditation with our miracle mornings. I go for walks. I do yoga. I try to take time for me as much as possible. I'm not talking about having baths and, and massages. First of all, you can't have a massage, but not everyone likes a bath. I love to cook, I love to cook, especially fresh food from scratch for taking hours. That's massively relaxing for me. Um, so doing those things that you love, reading a book, listen, have a glass of wine if you need to have a glass of wine. It's crazy times, just try and limit it as much as you can. Maybe try and go for something like a, a gin and a, a sugar-free tonic because I know that's at least, that's keto friendly. So it's, it's really, really low in your carbs and your sugars, maybe something like that as an option. Definitely not really the beer and the wine. So I know. Hydration, massively, massively beneficial to your microbiome. Your probiotics love to be hydrated. So keep, I mean, we know for our skin, for our hair, for our, for our sanity, for our heart, for our brain, for our fingernails, everything, we need to be hydrated. This is a litre, okay? You need to be drinking at least this. This is my second litre, but I am a thirsty person and I do chat all the live long day. Even though I'm in the house on my own, this is my third live and even between that I was chatting away to Harriet, to myself, 
to the window, to the fan, anyone, I'm a chat, chatty person. But you need to be hydrated massively. Sleep, you've got to try and get some sleep. You have got to try and get some sleep. Now, one of the things that works hugely for me is this tea. Can you see that? It's from Sainsbury's. I drink a lot of sleepy teas, and this is the best one I have found. It tastes very flowery of flowers. So if that's not your thing, it might not be something that is great for you. But the, the Twinings one is also phenomenal. We really like this one. I literally, we will have that when we go to bed. And I'll be out in minutes. I'll be out in minutes. Also, CBD. Now, this is the one from Holland and Barrow. I'm not advertising that one. That is just the one that I have which is great going back to the stress situation, but also the sleep, have a few drops of that when I go to bed. There's no reason why I have that over any other. It's just that that's the only place I know to buy CBD from where it doesn't get complicated, but I've talked to people that sell it and they're like, this, this, this many mills and that much concentration, like, I don't understand what any of that means. Whereas when I go to Holland and Barrett, I know that, and that size, I'm fine with and sleep great so that's just what I do a few drops of that under my tongue is amazing reduces my anxiety it helps me sleep it is phenomenal now if you can get your hands on some apple cider vinegar that you can deal with having as a shot we have this one which is mixed with a little bit of apple juice and it's phenomenal we have it as a shot every morning your fermented foods are great great for your gut so if you're loving your kimchi if you're loving your sauerkraut if you're loving your apple cider vinegar oh my gosh that that's just you know water fermented food your gut is loving life a shot of this as well in the ginseng energy physics is is brilliant because a shot of that mixed in with those it turns into a very similar to a kombucha it tastes like a kombucha and it acts in your body like a kombucha so that's a really good way to get um, the apple cider vinegar in you if it's something that you think that you can take. Do you know what? Even if it's something that you're not sure if you can take, you need it. Do you know what? Sometimes you just got to suck it up and do what's best for you. And that's what's best for you. So get it on the tablespoon and just drink it. Just get it in you. Just get it in you. It's, not, it's a non-negotiable, really. And high fibre as well in your body. High fibre is great for your body. And it also is very good for making you feel full and keeping you full up for longer. So that is really, really awesome. Now, the last thing you can do for your gut, which is great, is to take some digestive enzymes. There are, like I said before, a lot out there on the market. Some are just full of sugar. So you look at them and think, well, for your dairy and you're full of sugar. So not quite sure what good you think that you're gonna do to my gut because you're gonna damage it even more. The one that we take is a powder. It's mixed with chicory root uh, for the prebiotics. Okay, so you've got prebiotics and probiotics. Your probiotic is your bacteria, probiotic. Prebiotic is the food the bacteria eats. So when you are putting probacteria into your body, probiotics, they need to have prebiotics as well because your gut so damaged, give it a helping hand. Don't send all that back, you know, send all that amazing bacteria into your, into your stomach lining with sugar and dairy and alcohol floating around. It's just going to die straight away. It's just going to die. Send it with some food as well. You know, send your kids to school with a pat lunch. Then send, send your bacteria into your tummy with a pat lunch. That's all I'm saying. Just give it a helping hand. So one that we take, it is very, very gentle and soothing. It's a ginger and lemon flavour. Very, very soothing. You take it about yay much room temperature water on your empty empty tummy we always take it before our evening meal so it, it goes straight into that tummy everything's really great and happy in there and it does its job it works synergistically with your body with those enzymes in there as well and that is everything i wanted to talk to you about your gut i know it seems really crazy and overwhelming that something that we just didn't know about has such a massive effect but when you stop, if you stopped yourself and kept a food diary for the week and you wrote down what you ate and you wrote down your moods and your physical symptoms, you would be able to link every single one, every, every mood swing, every pain, apart from obviously, you know, if you've just done some yoga or you've just fell over and banged your head, that's, if you fall over and bang your head, that's got nothing to do with the food that you eat. So 
it's just something to bear in mind. It's something that is part of our 30 days, our 30 days to healthy living, um, which is a reset for your body to get your gut into working order. It supplies all of the supplements that your body needs to be working optimally and uh, just to be absolutely doing its very, very best, being its strongest, being its happiest and helping every other function in your body. So those supplements are all involved in the 30 days, all of them, your proteins, your digestive enzymes, your greens balance, which gives you your full, full vegetable intake that you need in one drink every day, done and dusted, a detox cleanse, your fizzy energy sticks, a full recipe book, it's got everything in one bundle that will get you through 30 days beautifully and those digestive enzymes are a part of that package so they are just great for you to take and with that i'm going to let you go and i'm going to go and take some probiotics my very own self so i hope you have a lovely evening if you've got any questions any questions at all please just send us a message myself or Ali. we're both absolutely readily available to you and we can answer any questions that you have and i will let you know with the rest of my journey how that goes for the next 30 days i hope you have a lovely evening okay bye